All right, so are you ready to dive into Netflix's Wednesday? I know there's so much buzz about the show. Everyone's talking about it. Is it worth the hype? Should you add it to your watch list? Well, we actually found this YouTube review that really like nails the vibe of this show. So uh, yeah, I think it'll help us figure out if Wednesday is for you. I got to say, what's really interesting to me right away is how Wednesday takes, you know, the Adams family, like we all know them, but it puts them in this totally new genre. It's a murder mystery. Yeah, it's a total twist. And Nevermore Academy, the setting itself, I mean, talk about subverting expectations. It's like they took that classic magical school trope and made it gothic. Yeah, it's like Hogwarts, but with a Tim Burton filter. Mm -hmm. You know, like instead of bright open spaces, we get these shadowy halls and this like imposing architecture. You can almost feel how these outcast characters are seen by the outside world, right? Totally. It's like the set design itself is making a statement. Yeah. And in the middle of all this gothic stuff, you've got Wednesday trying to solve not one, but two mysteries. Right. You've got the murders happening in the town, which is that classic whodunit vibe. Yeah. But then there's this whole family secret thing going on, too, which adds this whole other layer of, like, history and emotion to the story. It's kind of like Scooby-Doo meets gothic literature, yeah, you know? Yeah. Oh, and speaking of things that are creepy, but also kind of endearing Jen Ortega as Wednesday. Wow. She's amazing, right? Yeah. Her performance is definitely a highlight. Yeah. I mean, it's not easy to play a character who's so deadpan, but somehow she makes her relatable and even charming. There's just something about the way she delivers her lines. It's so captivating. Like when she's being totally blunt and honest, it's almost refreshing in a world where everyone's trying so hard to please, you know? It's true. And then you have those moments of physical comedy, like that dance scene that went viral. It's kind of macabre, but you can't look away. There's like an artistry to it, don't you think? Absolutely. And the rest of the cast is pretty strong, too. Like Gwendolyn Christie as Principal Weems, she's got this presence that's so commanding, but at the same time, you can sense this vulnerability underneath. It's interesting how she does that right, that duality. Yeah. You see it in her expressions, her movements. It really makes you wonder what secrets she's hiding. Right. It's like the show keeps hinting that there's something more going on beneath the surface. And speaking of things lurking, we can't forget about Thing. Oh, yeah. Thing. Yeah. That disembodied hand somehow manages to be both creepy and completely lovable. You know, watching Thing run around, it reminds me of when my cat tries to sneak food off the counter. They have that same, like, mischievous energy. It's amazing how they use puppeteering and CGI to create this character that you genuinely care about, even though it's just a hand. They really nailed that whole creepy but endearing vibe. Now, our YouTube reviewer mentioned that the mystery itself has a ton of twists and turns. They even compared it to a seafood market with all the red herrings. Yeah, they definitely keep you guessing, which is what you want in a mystery. Mm. But... I think it's worth mentioning that even though it has those classic mystery elements, there are also some of those familiar teen drama tropes. Oh, you mean like the love triangle and some of the villains being a little over the top? I did wonder a few times if it crossed the line into too cheesy territory. Where do you think that line is? That's a good question. It's tricky, right? <laughs> it's about finding the right balance. Yeah. But I think the show is self-aware enough that it works. Like, it's kind of winking at the audience and acknowledging those tropes while still having fun with them. So you're saying that the cheesiness is intentional, and that's part of what makes it charming. Exactly. It's like the show is saying, yeah, we know this is a little over the top, but just go with it. And speaking of things that are maybe a little over the top, the dialogue is such a mix, right? There are these moments of sharp wit and clever wordplay, but then there are some lines that are, well, shall we say, more memorable for being kind of corny. I think that's intentional, too. It creates this layered effect where you have those really clever moments next to those cheesy lines. Maybe it's a way to appeal to a wider audience. You mean like they're trying to appeal to people who love that classic Adams Family humor and also bring in fans of teen dramas? Exactly. It gives you this multifaceted experience that keeps you entertained on different levels. But it does raise a question. Does this blend of styles actually make the show more enjoyable? That's a great question. It's like they're trying to reach different generations of viewers. Could that be why so many people like it? It's definitely something to think about. This blend of styles is something we're seeing a lot in entertainment these days, where creators are trying to tap into both nostalgia and current trends. It's like they're bridging the gap between older Adams Family fans and a whole new audience. It's actually pretty clever. And speaking of clever, let's talk about the visuals. Our reviewer called it Tim Burton like. Which I think is pretty accurate. Yeah, it definitely has that gothic vibe. But it's not as stylized as some of his other work. Do you think it's Burton-esque enough to really call it that, though? Hmm, that's a good question. You definitely see elements of his style. 
like the use of moody blues in those shadowy forests. And they got Danny Elfman to do the music, which immediately sets a certain tone. Oh, absolutely. Elfman's music is so distinctive, that mix of whimsical and dark, it's woven throughout the whole series, mm. and it really complements the gothic visuals and adds to the atmosphere. I feel like his music adds this emotional depth to the show. You know, it really underscores those moments of tension and mystery and even the humor. You're so right. Music is such an important part of visual storytelling. Right. It can evoke emotions and create atmosphere so effectively. Okay, so we've talked about setting the characters, the mystery, even the music. But before we get too deep into the details, I think we should take a step back. Who is this show really for? Who would actually enjoy this specific mix of gothic mystery, teen drama, and Adam's family humor? I think it comes down to what we were saying before about how the show has these different layers of appeal. If you like dark humor and cool visuals and a good mystery, then Wednesday probably has something for you. Yeah, it feels like it's for people who like things that are familiar but also unexpected. It's like comfort food with a little kick, you know? Yeah, totally. Mm. It takes those things we love, like the Adams Family dynamic and the whole who doing it thing, yeah. and then it adds its own spin. And let's be real, the show's not afraid to be a little campy. Yeah, it definitely gets over the top sometimes. But isn't that part of what makes it fun? It's not trying to be this super serious thriller. It's more about just enjoying the ride. Right. It's about pure entertainment and escapism. It's a show that doesn't take itself too seriously, and I think that's why people like it, mm. especially these days, you know? Yeah, it's like giving us permission to relax and laugh at how absurd it all is. Exactly. And, you know, the show's actually had a pretty big impact culturally, especially with younger viewers. Like that dance scene Wednesday does, it's all over TikTok, yes. and inspired so many memes and fan art. Oh, yeah, I've seen those. It's amazing how one scene can capture people's imaginations like that. It really shows you the power of visual storytelling and Jenna Ortega's performance. The creators really did something special by tapping into something that resonates with such a wide audience, especially younger people who are so into internet culture and trends. It's like they found the perfect way to blend those modern elements with the classic Gothic aesthetic and the Adams Family legacy. It's a really cool mix of old and new. Like they took this classic franchise and updated it for today while staying true to what makes it special. Exactly, and that's really hard to do. It shows how creative they are and how well they understand both the original Adams Family and what's popular today. It sounds like they really found that sweet spot. So based on everything we've talked about, Wednesday seems like a winner for fans of the original newcomers to the Adams Family and basically anyone who enjoys a well-made show that's entertaining and has a bit of darkness and a lot of heart. I agree. It's a show that manages to be both familiar and surprising. It really does offer something for everyone. All right, so there you have it, folks. Our deep dive into the wonderfully weird world of Netflix's Wednesday. We've looked at the setting, the characters, the mystery, even the music. We've covered a lot. But before we wrap things up, I want to go back to something our reviewer said that I found really interesting. They mentioned how the show is self-aware about its cheesiness and how that actually makes it more enjoyable. What do you think about that? Hmm, that's a really good point. It makes you wonder if the show took itself too seriously, would it still be as charming? Would people still love it as much? Right. It's like by admitting that some parts are a little cheesy, the show is giving us permission to just enjoy it without overthinking it. It creates a space for us to laugh together and just have fun. It's almost like a meta commentary on the genre. Yeah. You know, it's saying... We know these things are a bit silly. Let's just embrace it. And that goes back to what we were saying about the show being escapist. Yeah. In a world that's often so serious and stressful, a little bit of self-aware silliness can be a nice break. Definitely. It reminds us that it's okay to embrace the absurd, to laugh at ourselves, and to find joy in the unexpected. And what's more unexpected than a disembodied hand becoming a fan favorite character? I mean, <laughs> Thing is the real star here. I completely agree. Thing shows the power of creativity and imagination. It reminds us that anything is possible when you approach storytelling with a sense of playfulness and a willingness to try new things. Well said. So to our listeners, we leave you with this question. Does Wednesday's embrace of the cheesy, the predictable, even the ridiculous actually make it a better show? Is it possible that in a world that takes itself too seriously, a little bit of self-aware, Silliness is exactly what we need. That's definitely something to think about. And of course, no deep dive into Wednesday would be complete without encouraging you to check out that iconic dance scene. Seriously, it's a must-see. It's a cultural phenomenon for a reason. You'll be snapping your fingers and doing those moves before you know it. And if you do, be sure to share it with us. We'd love to see your take on Wednesday's iconic moves. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep diving deep. 
It's interesting, right? How Wednesday manages to be both dark and funny. I mean, it's not easy to do, but they make it look effortless. It's true. It's like they know that dark and funny aren't opposites. They can actually work really well together to create something more complex and interesting to watch. Yeah, it's like those funny moments you get in a horror movie. They give you a break from the tension, right. but then they also make the suspense even stronger when things get scary again. Right. Wednesday does that really well. The show doesn't shy away from the darker stuff, but then it throws in these moments of humor and absurdity that keep you hooked. It's a good reminder that even when things are dark, there's always room for laughter. And speaking of things that are both dark and delightful, we have to talk about the music. Danny Elfman did an amazing job. His music is such a big part of why the show feels the way it does. You know, it adds that gothic feel and that sense of whimsy. It just works so well with the visuals and the story. I love how he uses those classic Adams Family themes, but gives them this fresh, modern sound. It's like he's paying tribute to the original while creating something new for Wednesday. It's a perfect blend of old and new. It really shows how talented Elfman is. He knows how to write music that sticks with you, and the Wednesday score is no exception. It really is the kind of music that stays in your head. Yeah. So if you're looking for a show that looks amazing, has interesting themes and great music with that dark humor and gothic charm, then Wednesday is definitely worth checking out. I agree. It's a show that will make you laugh, think, and maybe even want to dance a little. And, you know, you might even find yourself embracing your own inner weirdo. And that's a good thing, right? To celebrate being different and finding people who appreciate you for who you are. Absolutely. So go ahead and dive into the world of Wednesday. We think you'll be glad you did. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep diving deep. And remember, a little bit of fun and escape is sometimes just what we need. So true. Until next time.